launching National Stablecoin. Welcome to the Crypto Mastery Class. Hi, everyone, and a special welcome to our new Moonstream M3 crypto members. We have a great class for you today. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and I've got Joe on the line, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. So we are going to look at the news, the overall market, some hot movers in the basket, a crypto screener review. We're going to look at the indicators and most importantly, you, you're important, your questions and answers. So let's get started. But first, want to let you know that the opinion expressed here is not investment advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So just know that all investing is risky. So today we are in week 52 of 2022. Happy New Year's, everybody. Hope you had a good holiday. So even though Ripple is in this deep dive court system, um, you know, fighting for its life almost, you know, I think that we all forget that Ripple is actually still a functioning system. And so I brought this article to you today because I thought, well, wow, this is an very good uh, example of how Ripple is actually ripping it up in the back end, even though that they are in court, you think that their their activity is halted, but it's not. So here we go. Paula, Paul, Paul, oh my gosh, Palu is launching a national stable coin with Ripple. This is by Godfrey Benjamin on the coinrise.com. So the public of Paul, Palau, 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 that's what it's called, Palau, an Oceania country known to have over 500 islands has teamed up with payment protocol Ripple Labs to develop its national stablecoin. In an interview with Bloomberg, the current sitting president of the region, Strangle Whips Jr., shared details of the ongoing project and other strategies which Paulo is taking to boost its digitization and the full integration of blockchain technology. The president spoke of stable coins as a means of making payments more safe and easy and more secure. So Whips Jr. mentioned that the country would take advantage of new technologies, citing the recent passing of the Digital Residency Act as one of the few moves that have been made so far. Whips Jr. recognized Paula, um, Palau's small population of about 20,000 people as an advantage to its current digitization push. This is a new world. This is a new world for Palau, but we are excited to be part of it. One of the advantages that we have is we're small and hopefully we can mobilize our government and be more adapted to the changes that need to be made in this fast changing environment, he said. In 2021, it was clearly stated that the nation tapped Ripple to develop a United States dollar pegged digital currency to enhance cross-border payments. From discussions, the launch was meant to happen in the first half of this year. Cheng Peng Zhao, known as CZ, the chief executive officer, CEO of leading digital asset service provider Binance, was also in Palau to discuss the integration of Binance Pay into the country's payment system, according to the president. At that time, the island nation, the I'm sorry, the island nation was issuing non-fungible tokens, NFTs to be used as ID for its root name system, digital residency, residency program. I thought that was a pretty interesting concept. They're using NFTs for a, let's say again, root name system, digital residency program. So a lot of times people in crypto don't understand the significance of this technology and how versatile it is and how streamlining a lot of these paper procedures and um, residency programs, let's just say, can be streamlined with NFTs. So this technology is 
essential, will be very soon, most likely essential and very dependent on. So I thought that this article was really important to understand if they can pull this off with a 20,000 uh, populated island country, this could be duplicated on a mass level. So here's a little bit more information. The NFTs were issued on Binance's BNB chain in collaboration with California-based innovative commercial lab, Cryptic Labs. Binance was also crucial to certain regulations which this sandy country was expected to put in place for the digital residency project, especially the Corporate Registry Act. It's good to have a commitment from Binance to help us from the regulatory side, President Sharangal Whips Jr. said at the time. So we'll have to follow that project and see how they do with developing their first stable coin and becoming a digital currency community. So now we have Terra Luna. If anybody got caught in this downfall or um, you were like me, you uh, took advantage of the downfall, bought in the dip and got a little profit in the rise. All right. So it looks like there's still some people profiting in the rise. So let's see what's going on. May make me regret selling when I had some profit in the last, uh, you know, last year. So Terra Luna Classic price prediction as Lunk pumps up 20%. Question is, will Lunk get to be $1 incoming? This is by Joel Frank on CryptoNews.com. So despite the fact that broader cryptocurrency markers are flatlining into the year's end amid low volumes, with many traders and big market players taking holidays, Lunk is seeing a pump. Lunk is the cryptocurrency that powers the still functioning original version of the Terra blockchain and was last trading higher by about 25% on the week just to the north of 0.00018 level. The cryptocurrency's near-term technical outlook recently took a turn for the better and as a result, price predictions are becoming more bullish. Long's latest rally looks to be as a result of a technical breakout from a downtrend that has been in place since early October. The latest surge, which has seen Lunk just above 0.00018 from around 0.000145 at the start of the week, has seen the cryptocurrency vault above its 21, 50, and 200 day moving averages at point. 000154 and 000163 and 0.000179 respectively. Lunk bulls have likely hit their first profit target since the breakout from the medium term downtrend. The 0.001850 to 0.00019 area has been an important area of support turned resistance since late September. The bulls were unable to push Lunk above this area, suggesting that profit taking is becoming more of a headwind. That could result in Lunk dipping back towards support in lows of 0.00016 in the near term. However, the medium term outlook for Lunk does look a little better in wake of the recent breakout, meaning dip buyers might jump on any retracement back to the 0.00016 area. If the bulls can muster a lasting break above 0.000185 to 19 resistance, that could open the door to push higher towards the next major area of resistance around 0.00028. A popular question is whether Lunk can return as high as the $1 level. That's because prior to the collapse of Terra ecosystem and the depegging of the USDT token that caused hyperinflation in Luna, now Lunk, Luna used to trade well above a dollar per token. Indeed, it actually went as high as $120 at one stage prior to its collapse. But Lunk's tokenomics mean a return to $1 is improbable. 
That's because there is currently a circulating LUNC token support of nearly six trillion. At a $1 per token, that would value LUNC at six trillion, nearly 19 times more than Bitcoin's current market capitalization. So LUNC needs to see a substantial reduction in the number of circulating tokens if it is ever going to stand a chance of recovering to $1. Sorry, I know we were thinking and we were hoping at the end of this article we were going to say, yes, Lunk get to a dollar, but most likely not going to happen. All right, overall market, Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap. So the overall market is down. It's at 108, 100 and, I'm sorry, what is this? $809 billion. This is a seven day chart and I put a star next to that incredible dip. So literally at 12 o'clock on December 23rd, there was a, a big movement, a sell-off and a buyback. So literally the market fell probably from maybe 820 billion down to definitely like maybe 730 billion. So we that is most likely a one, um, $100 billion dip. So it's always interesting to me. I always wonder, well, where was that going? Where did it go? What, what, what was that transaction? So we have these on all of our historical documents and, and videos. So you can always track to see on a seven day basis, what's the market doing? So in general, um, when we checked the market yesterday, it was at 813 billion. So we are a little bit down this week in conjunction to last week. All right. So now let's look at the charts. If you're not a crypto mastery or an M3 member and would like to get access to the indicators we'll be using and also be able to attend these weekly classes every Tuesday for free, you can go to moonstream.io forward slash M3. So you can just subscribe to the above URL and this will be on YouTube in just a few hours. So you will be able to Get that link if you don't have it written down yet. Bitcoin USD one week performance chart with the crypto master indicators. So all in all, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven indicators in the crypto mastery bundle. And the early reversal is that arrow showing on Bitcoin. This is a one week. So this is weeks past the early reversal came in saying, hey, Bitcoin's coming down. The average true range is still in the downward directory direction. Um, that is that large, or that that long red line and the red shading in that first indicator set shows that it's still in the downward area. And we'll show you zone. Uh, we'll show you how to know when that's going to flip into an an upswing. Now we the next set of indicators we have is the trend and the radar. The radar it's one of my favorite it's amazing so that radar turns this chart into essentially four charts and what you're looking at is the average time frame for 60 minutes 240 stands for 240 minutes so it's four hours the one day average and the one week so for the one hour bitcoin is trending upward right now but for the four hour average is trending down for the one day average Bitcoin is going up, the one week average is going down. So if you're new to trading or which I would call the swing trading, it's uh, a little confusing when you're looking at the different time frames, but it's very helpful that if you stick to one time frame that you're trading and so therefore you can make sure that you get the ups and the downs in that time frame. Be very um conscientious of that and we can go that into q a zone if you have questions about you know what what's the best time frame for you and your personality and your risk assessment all right the next indicator on that second line zone is the trend that indicator has very easy to understand elements embedded in it so the key comes in where there's a key opportunity coming and then the bell says okay it's time to get in and if that trend continues to move upward this is the buy low sell high zone, okay, or area. If it's continuing to go up, a number will register. So you could see recently on Bitcoin on the right-hand side, the bell came in and then there was a one and a two. 
and then the number stopped printing until the three, the four, and the dollar sign. That shows that Bitcoin was having a lot of upward resistance. So this is a great indicator to know that when it comes to you having the confidence in that coin continuing to move up, if you don't see that number, don't have um, don't have confidence that it's going to go up. You should know that hey, this is there is an issue. There there is a a fighting, a fighting in the force for this Bitcoin to be moving in an upward direction. Now the next indicator, and all these are designed by Joe. He does quantitative analytics and programming to get, a, there's a lot of math involved in what you're seeing here, okay, behind the scenes. So the signal line, that is saying that the, the screen, so it's going up, but the most important thing to know about this when using this indicator is you see that gold line, when the color, whether it's red or green, is separated from that gold line, that shows that, that there's a more of a momentum in that particular direction. So right now, it, it does say it's in a slight upward trajectory, but the thing is, is again, that confidence level, it should be low at this point in your mind with Bitcoin to continue the upward because that green and that gold line is so tight. When it gets to that point, the direction can flip and switch in a New York minute. All right. So therefore, the confidence that I have in Bitcoin continuing a momentum of upward for me personally is low when I see that. Now, uh, this is pretty exciting, the trend strength indicator, all right? Those arrows, the green shows that it looks like it could be going up, all right? So here we have, we have two indicators saying down on the upward area, and this is a one week chart, so it's averaging a one week basis, okay? So the last two weeks, it looked like it was going up, and you can see that the three and the four and the dollar sign hit. And we need to wait for the one week to finish up to get the next weekly average. So at this point, it's saying the trend strength is looking upward. So this could be considered as an early indicator, similar to the early reversal. So I hope it would go up, but you know we'll see. So there is there is some hope showing in Bitcoin could be moving up in the trend strength, but the other indicators are not following suit yet. Now. The other favorite, favorite indicator I have is the volatility index, and that's on the bottom. So right now, Bitcoin, if you take your eyes and swing to the right-hand side of the chart in the bottom, you see that 4.03. That is a very significant number for people in the acquisition mode. So Bitcoin very rarely gets down into a volatility index, which is the oversold zone close to zero. It's at a 4.03. That thick red line, that number is a 20. And if you take your eyes and go a little bit up top on that volatility index, you see two green lines and a green zone. That's when it's overbought. Okay, so you have a floor and a ceiling. So what is such incredible part of this volatility index indicator is that you could see here, Bitcoin is everything but overbought right now. So that first green line in that volatility index is an 80 and the top is a 100. When you see like in November of 2022, you see how the line went to that green zone. That is a ceiling. And when you see the Bitcoin get into that zone, if you don't take profit, I can almost guarantee you that someone's going to take your profit for you. OK, so if you are someone that likes to buy and hold forever, well, then that this indicator is absolutely essential for you, because if you like money, then if you have and you hold for a long term time, then maybe you want to put yourself on a one month chart. But when it gets into that green zone, you're going to remember me saying if you don't take profit, someone's going to take it for you. OK, but here's the thing. If you're. If you've taken profit and you have all this USD or stable coin just waiting to get back in, then that's when you wait for the red zone. So these are the two activity zones. We call the black zone where you see the line go black in the volatility index, we call that let the cake bake. That's like it's it's not high, it's not low, it's in the cake bake zone. You know, if you take the cake out too early or the bread, it's gonna fall. You know, so let that like let the yeast let it grow. So it needs more temperature, more time in the oven. 
All right, so let's go back down. So currently Bitcoin is what I call in the acquisition zone, the volatility index. It makes me think of buying clothes in a store in the back of the store on the red tag section at 70 to 80% off because it's off season. Remember, we all have cycles. So this isn't an off season cycle, but this is when, you know, if you're on a budget, you're buying your kids winter clothes in the summer and you're buying your kids summer clothes in the winter. So that's when, or you could say a lot of the investors say you buy when there's blood in the streets. It's red. Take whatever you want. So I hope you guys, if I test you later, if I'm going to ask you, is Bitcoin in the oversold volatility index zone? The answer is, let's see if you answer that correctly. I'll ask you guys a little bit later. Okay, so this is, this is, this is what's going on with Bitcoin right now. Good or bad, it is what it is. All right, so now I'm going to flip and we're going to look at Ethereum. So you guys understand the indicators now, so let's read Ethereum. So this is a one-week performance chart with the Crypto Mastery indicators, and each one of those candlesticks represents one week. So there's something I forgot to tell you on the indicators. So on this top indicator, which is so essential too, those candlestick colors represent the status of the volatility index. So you see red candlesticks when it's in the oversold zone of volatility index. And you see black uh, candlesticks when it's in the let the cake bake zone. And then you'll see green if you take your eyes to the November of 20, 2022 zone, those candlesticks are green because it's in the, what do we call it? The overbought zone. And it's at a ceiling section. And you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Like it is a ceiling. And those, so let's talk a little bit more about that average true range indicator. So those three lines are called Keltner bands, and they're absolutely amazing when it comes to what will it potentially do next. It's essentially moving averages, but it's where if that candlestick is below the lower blue line, the lowest of those three, it's typically going to hit that first line first. Then if there's momentum, it's most likely going to hit the second line. And then after it hits that second line, if it stays and maintains that position, it's going to go to the third line. So this is great for expectancy and possible predictions, okay? or understanding, you know, this is what has happened in the past and this is what most likely would happen in the future. So here's where we're at right now with Ethereum. You could see what happened in November of 2022. It got the candlestick turned green. It was in the ceiling zone. And remember, if you didn't take profit on November 2022, somebody else took it for you, okay? And then you could see it went down. So. Actually, I believe that's, I'm sorry, that's November 2021, guys. It's November 2021, all right? And then for 2022, it's pretty much been um, a little bit of a roller coaster, but it hasn't gotten back up to that November 2021 zone. All right, so where we're at right now is we're right above the bottom of the Keltner band, those three blue lines, okay? So if it's going to go anywhere, it's going to go to that second Keltner band. All right. That's where our goal is. That's where we would, if you were to buy this and set a sell, you may want to check to set the sell. So to know what that number is, you could take your eyes to the right hand side of this Ethereum chart and that first blue shaded area, $1,383.99. That's that first Keltner band level. The second Keltner band level is $1,589.05. And that red shaded zone, that stands for the average true range. What that means is the price of Ethereum will have to exceed that top red number for the entire average true range to switch to entry, meaning the momentum would be going towards the upward direction. So this Ethereum and this average of the average true range of the Ethereum will remain red until we surpass that number with the current day averages. So that number will change as every day passes and the averages change. 
but in general you look at that red number and we, we would need to we would need to surpass that red line number red shaded number in order to get the average year range to change all right so the early reversal came in four weeks ago and so we're kind of still waiting is is it going to move all right and, and it and it's still in a pace that is uh it, go, it went up a little bit you can see that that candlestick and if i could if this was a live chart i would zone in on that you could see that it oh it stretched it did go up but it didn't make that that second countner band but it's sitting on that first countner band which is that that first moving average the lower one all right so let's go down to the next indicators for ethereum and this was just taken today like 20 minutes ago so we have the radar saying on average for the one hour average ethereum is going up four hour average is going down for the one day average is moving up for the one week it's still down remember this is a one week chart so the trend you can just see there's still turbulence in in any you know stamina of an upward trajectory for ethereum it's fighting for its life right now or its, its position so you can see the trend did start to move up um, around November, and you can see the two, the three, the four printed, but then the number stopped printing, even though that candlestick is thick, and that the thickness of the candlestick is significant, it's significant of the average time that the price remained in a certain zone. And when you have those thin little lines, those are wicks, and that stands for a short period that the price remained in that zone. So you can see that the trend after the four printed, it started going down, which the numbers didn't print. And then you had to scoot over, so four more weeks, and then the dollar sign came in. That really represents a five, but it's just there to remind you, if you don't take profit, someone's gonna take it for you. And then the six, is just another number in the trend indicator. And then the seven, you can customize these to show anything you want, but that money bag um, is representing the seven. And then if the cycle happens again, a key would come up and then a bell. So at this point, we're waiting for a key and a bell. So do I have confidence in Ethereum going up right now? Um, I'm gonna go down and deep dive into the one day chart and I wanna kind of see uh, the radar is saying on a one day it's moving up. So that radar is giving us four charts in one. So we're gonna zone in on the one day chart and that's where we may have some more success in an upward trajectory um, if we're just sticking with the one day chart. But on the one week basis, the average is down. So this signal line is tight for the one week chart here. So that means I could switch at any time, um, but it is green, so that's a positive for the upward trajectory. Uh, I do like to see this, the trend strength has come in as an upward arrow so that is exciting let's kind of see if that's going to follow suit and then we have the volatility index similar to bitcoin but it's not as low as bitcoin in the volatility index meaning the oversold zone it's at 11.62 and if you remember bitcoin was at a four so bitcoin is a really good acquisition position at this point um that low but there have been a lot of rumors of it going down so um you know at your own risk right and you have to know your own stamina and you know if you you know it, it's it's hard to buy something that's moving down I, I would kind of wait till all these signs and signals are all in place so that you can have a good trade but the volatility index is 11.62 so it is still in a good acquisition section all right so now we're going to look at our basket we have bitcoin ethereum polygon cardano chainlink Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. So most of these can be found on Coinbase, some on Binance US. So screenshot right before this webinar, you know, Adam was moving up 0.57, the other ones are down, moving downward. So let's look at the crypto screener review. This has been filtered by coins with over a million market cap and it's been filtered you can see on the right hand side there's a little number two next to filtered it also is only reflecting coinbase coinbase and binance us and the technical rating 
has um, been clicked so that you're only seeing the top coins that exist under their strong buy um, and buy um, technical rating. This is a screener that is comes with a trading view free account. So it, it's not anything that you can't get access to, but those are just how I'm filtering it. This is also representing the 1W that stands for a one week average. So we have Ocean Protocol, um, and I don't buy off of this. I just use this as a some kind of a guidepost. So I wanna deep dive into the charts and apply my indicators to these charts to see if it's something that's right for me and my portfolio to invest in. So you have Ocean Protocol, and that one is on Coinbase, and then on uh, Binance US, it's just called Ocean. And then you have <laughs> iExec RLC on, on Binance US. That's kind of interesting. It, it's down 45%. Interesting, we should look at that chart. And then we have Gemini Dollar. That's nothing I'm going to be buying. That's just a stable coin. You have DREP on Coinbase, Ant on Binance US, Fetcha AI on Binance US. DeFi Yield Protocol on Coinbase and um, Pax Gold on Binance US, Hedera on Coinbase and Pundi X. Wow, I have not seen Pundi X in a long time. That's a, um, sounds like a crypto accepting system. And then you have Near Protocol on Coinbase. So we're going to, um, jump in and we're going to look at some live charts but thank you everyone i really enjoyed having you all here today and um, we are going to go and jump into live charts but um we decided to open the class today to everyone interested to give you a taste of how we're walking people through the volatile markets to get access to our custom indicators this week um, and more you can go to the moonstream.io and um, this is time for Q and A, so we're gonna jump into hey, the Susie. charts. Yes, and this is Brett. Brett is on the line. Hi, hey, everyone. Um, good, uh, good start of the class here, and hey, everybody, welcome. So as Susie mentioned, uh, some of you are new M3 traders, and so welcome to that. Some of you are from our Moonstream list, and we decided to invite everybody, kind of an end of the year welcome to see how we do this. Uh, the format is usually the same. We might continue to make changes and uh, usually start with news and go through some charts, which we'll do here in a minute. I've got a couple I'd like to show. Pretty quiet markets right here today. Uh, if you are in the class though and haven't or not already an M3 member, this is a new program for us that includes all of these indicators and also the trainings. I do a class tomorrow, which is a little bit higher level. We dive into the charts a little bit deeper and this is more of the uh, beginner class, but um, certainly uh, if you'd like to learn more, that link, uh, Susie, you forgot the uh, M3 on the end. So it's moonstream.io slash M3. And uh, currently, uh, we had sh we had closed that last weekend, and we're going to reopen it here for a few days, so just to give everyone a chance to get involved. Uh, but on that, uh, excuse me, if you could just hand me the presentation, I wanted to show on that. Uh, I don't. It might have been a data glitch, Susie, on that chart you showed on the total market cap, because I don't think it dropped that deep. And so, what I'm going to do here oh, is bring yeah, that up. Great. So, all right, can you guys see this? This is a bit of a, some spaghetti. No, we see, your, we see your computer. Okay, great. So let me do this, guys, because we want to make sure we're giving you the right information. So with, always good to look at the charts here on TradingView. And so I'm going to try to turn off some of these other things here so it doesn't look so confusing. But what we did have, now, excuse me, I mean, the market cap came down around $750 billion. It's been there for the past few months. But right, we didn't we can't see it yet. You just told me you could. No, we can't. We can see just your black um, computer. It's it's just with your files on it. OK, that's what I was uh, asking. So sorry, guys, I've got uh, two screens here. Let me redo this and monitor one. All right. Sorry about that. Can you guys see this now? Yes. Yeah, it's a crypto total market cap. Great. So total market cap, um, in terms of that, these green boxes, let me just turn these off and clean it up a little bit. Uh, those are my targets. That's where I think we could go. And we cover this in more detail on the uh, class tomorrow. 
And so, but this past week, we didn't really see a huge drop here. We just, we've been kind of flatlining on this. That's why these total market cap and these free sites are really not, uh, you know, always verify on like a trading view or something like that, which is also free. So um, anyway, um, but these are targets to keep in mind and it's not a very bullish scenario. So I think we could head lower on down these regions, but there are still opportunities in these markets. We had one last week that we zeroed in on that went up 50% in a few days that um, is probably going to pull back a little and go higher. There is one I want to share with you here today that we can look at. It's got a pretty interesting chart. This class is really mostly designed to show you guys the indicators and how they operate. So why don't I jump back out to Bitcoin and I'll talk about the two scenarios here where we could either probably head up here and then come back down. But look at this. We're having a nice bearish engulfing candle. So if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's one of our bonuses in the course. A bearish engulfing candle means usually we're heading lower. And so we'll see how that closes for the day. And so scenario three here that uh, certainly could see something like this. And usually they cycle a bit. But um, now it doesn't mean we go down to these levels. Let's use our indicators to see what they tell us. Because this is really the, uh, it's like looking behind the curtain at the Wizard of Oz, right? And so uh, Joe here is on with us. He's a little bit under the weather. So I'm hopping on and he may join us in a minute. But uh, Joe's the Wizard of Oz. It's created these amazing indicators. And I've been trading for 20 years, never used anything as good as these. We've been refining them as uh, all year long. So let me make this a little bit wider for you guys. So <clears throat> what are we seeing here? So uh, visually, it would seem, hey, this thing probably heading lower with that bearish engulfing candle. But uh, we want to sort of keep an eye on these indicators, which, so we have, a, ERI is the early reversal indicator. When those align with the trend strength indicator, very high probability, um, but uh, we didn't really have didn't really have the confluence on all of these. So I'm going to hide that other version of the ERI, and uh, if you'll just ignore these big red boxes here for now, and all the drawings, then uh, the so we didn't see our signal line in confluence. What we really want to see is the early reversal indicator and then the signal line going green, red to green with high velocity. So not really flat, like this is sort of a flat push higher, but back here in November of 2022, we saw that high velocity signal line shoot up. And uh, sure enough, then we saw this nice sustained uptrend here. So this is what we're often and always looking for are new uptrends and uh, or continuations of downtrends. So, Again, this is a little bit more advanced that we'll unpack and we talk about weekly on the active the active trader class, which is tomorrow, Wednesdays. But uh, in terms of this one here, the trend line, I'm going to rearrange these because I usually have these uh, in a different order. So this trend indicator is excellent. So when it goes from the key to the belt, so when we can catch extended moves like that one back in November again, midline goes red to green right here and then we see the bell is our buy signal and then it usually continues on so the take profit is the little bag of money here so i know this is new for some of you uh, for those of you who have seen this every week it's a bit of review but i was on with a student the other night who had some confusion about the tsi so i'm going to kind of do a little quick lesson on that so everyone understands but uh, this here is really one of my favorite indicators for the trend is changing and we might have a few weeks because it's really not a day trading class we are here as swing traders that's where we have the biggest edge uh, the bigger banks in, re in regards to the stock market it's always been that way back in the day when we were trading and, and it was a day trader for a while it's very difficult but uh, swing trading we have that advantage because the big banks, and in this case, the whales and the institutions, they are like battleships. They can't turn around on a dime. They're not like a speedboat. We're the speedboat. So if we see trends and the institutions kind of lining up and accumulating, well, we can zip right in there and grab some profits if we're paying attention. So this here, this red to green is that, that sort of battleship turning around, that cruise liner is turning, and we can, can follow in the wake there, right? So 
this was kind of a multi-week rally. Whereas over here, we have the red line hasn't quite turned yet. The key says, hey, there might be a trend change happening, but we're not sure yet. The bell, that first bell after coming off a red is the ideal buy signal or confirmation. So what we talk about a lot, and if you're new here, you'll learn when these align, it's much, much higher probability. There are two in general that we like a lot, and generally those are enough. That would be the uh, early reversal indicator and then the uh, trend strength indicator. So I'd have to zoom out to show you some more examples there. But uh, here, ERI there with this trend strength going from green to red had a nice rally up. Similarly here, green arrow, green arrow, nice rally up. And on the way down, this is called every market reversal since last year, even back to the COVID crash. When those two align, right here, red arrow, red arrow, went down. Then we didn't get uh, a green arrow there, but here, red arrow, and this went to red, went down. So this is the first phase. When they line up, all four of them, we call it kind of the four horsemen unofficially. So if we go back here to August of 2022, we had the red early reversal indicator, the trend strength indicator went green to red, signal went green to red, and this trend indicator went green to red. And sure enough, had a big drop, big drop there. And so um, that um, again was August of 2022. We can validate that. There's some noise in the middle of it on the daily, but uh, just doing a quick review at the June of 2022, also that market top, and then also all the way back to the actual market top. We are nailing those on these arrows. So again, if I switch to a weekly, it would get rid of some of the smaller arrows. But uh, so anyway, it's a bit it's a bit to look at at first glance, but it's really not hard to learn. And if it calls the major reversals, is it worth it? So uh, this is not a sales pitch, guys, just exposing you to all of this. And so you can learn more at moonstream.io slash M3 if you'd like to review more of what's included there. Uh, we're reopening that today for a few days and then it's closed again. So uh, in that regard, um, let me just touch on that trend strength indicator because uh, the one of the students reached out to me, Joe, and was watching these in terms of the lines crossing. And uh, the, the, this is a good example of a fake out on that because uh, the uh, when the lines cross and you get the large red arrow, they will generally continue down once they break this 80 line and in confluence with the uh, early reversal indicator. So generally when it breaks the 80 line, it'll continue down to the lower cycle and that's where we can have profits. And similarly on the upside, we wanna see it ideally break above the 20 line because down here we had the green turn to green and the larger signal there, but it failed at the 20 line. And then finally it broke through. So this would have been the area to potentially go long. Similarly here, here it failed again, and then it pushed up there. So uh, that's just a little confirming indicator and the uh, chart we were watching has a really good example of it. And so in terms of the weekly here, this is uh, makes my lines a bit hard to read over off the screen, but let me just kind of zero in on this. The reason that we're showing this to you is we are waiting and anticipating a market bottom, but haven't seen it yet. So it's here on the weekly, you guys can see this a lot more clearly. Big red arrow there, went to red, went to red. That was the market top back in November of 2021. That's when I was advising our students in Active Trader to get out of the markets back in November. And then again in January of 2022, we we're pounding the table to get out. Had a little break, a bit of a pump here. But uh, when this red arrow pegged in April, we were saying, all right, really time to get out of these markets. But all the way back in November, uh, we had people getting out. So anyway, just a walk down memory lane there uh, in terms of what we are watching for and why does this affect you. Let me jump to a different look at a weekly chart, a little bit easier to read. So we are in these accumulation zones. These are things we talk about every week in the Active Trader class. And I do anticipate we'll head down lower into this region 
and we explain that fully in tomorrow's class why but I've been forecasting these levels since May of uh, last year, May of this year, that we would go down to 16.5. People laughed at me, but I have a public post why we would go to 16.5 when we've been there for um, over a month now. So my next forecast level is down to 14,000 and then probably down to the 12,500 and even 10,000 or just below 10,000. And I have a specific level in there that I talk about in the active trader class tomorrow. So if you'd like to join in on that, you can do so uh, in the moonstream.io slash M3 and learn more about that there. So these are some of the scenarios that I think uh, are likely. Uh, if we do push higher, we'll have some resistance in this area and I do think we come back down lower. So beware of a, an end of the year rally. I think that's a, uh, these bear market rallies are dangerous. Uh, so in terms of the, what we watch on these, again, some of our indicators that um, are not showing, they're, they're not confluence, they're not in confluence enough to say either way, and certainly not bullish enough. And so some people are saying we might see that run up, but we're not seeing that. So we've learned to trust our indicators, and this one here is perhaps the most significant one that Joe created called the radar. If you look in your lower right hand corner, and I'm gonna just make this full screen. The radar, this red box down here, tells us, again, the Wizard of Oz, we get to see behind the curtain, the all four time frames are bearish right now. So the four hour, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, very strong signal, we go lower. So if all of those other things I just showed you is overwhelming, uh, just having this is really all you need because when it's all green, green is go, that's one, Thing we'll be watching for a market bottom and a good signal at least for a bullish reversal however we're all red and as we know red means stop on uh, that um is another clue that i think we're going lower here guys again bearish engulfing candle right there and what uh, i may also do and show you guys because we have some special bonuses that uh, would come along with this to help you recognize what the candlesticks mean, the candle patterns. So I'm gonna pull this up here on my other screen. But if anyone has any questions, by the way. We do. Uh, okay, let's hear. We, yeah, do. we have and questions, so. Yeah, so if you're ready, let me know. Answer. Yeah, do that and I'll pull up this other thing I'm looking for. Okay, so we've got somebody that is open to get unmuted. He has a question for you. Um, so if you're okay, it's Gilio. If you're sure. okay, if I unmute yeah, him. Yeah, let's bring him on. It's always like interaction here. All right, all right, Gilio, I just unmuted him. It's a question about Solana. So he wants the Brett perspective. So go ahead. Yes, um, uh, if you can check one moment, Solana USDT. Sure, I can pull it up. Um, can't give investment advice, obviously, but let's take a look at Solana. It's a good one to keep an eye on. We picked that, that was our pick last August. I picked that at 35, and as we know, that thing has uh, been hurt fairly badly, but uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> all right, so Solana, I'm on a weekly chart. We'll start here, mostly red uh, on this. So what do I see? I don't see it's bottomed. I don't see any reason that um, we would get into Solana at these levels. What I'm looking for is the early reversal indicator. Now, it's just so everyone understands, and I'll explain it to you here, the ERI helps us kind of follow the footsteps of the elephants, and it follows a specific pattern that uh, in a certain time frame that Joe then layered in uh, in a Keltner band and some other things. So it shows us when there's buying coming in. Uh, it's all red on Solana. The ERI, we did have a weekly small signal, but that's only confirmed with the trend strength indicator, which is still going down. So I think Solana takes a little more time, may come down a little farther. And when those two align is when I would be looking at possibly getting in on the longer term. Now, the reason the weekly is important is that also shows when the bigger buyers are coming in. Let's have a look at the daily. What's good news about Solana is both the weekly and daily are starting to turn. And so the time to really look at this and look at Solana is when the ERI and the daily 
and the uh, the CSI and the daily align. So right now, sorry, it's, I'm gonna uncondense this, trying to make this bigger. So uh, the, um, but this is all red. I do think we had lower in terms of just some good old fashioned TA. Where do I think it's going? Uh, it's at an interesting support level. So this is a, a level you'd want to see it hold right here at ten dollars. Nice psychological level back here. Back in February of 2021 was a resistance level. Pushed up, been all the way up here. Flatline came back down. You might see this bottom and bounce, but I wouldn't be buying anything just yet. I'd want to see the radar turning and then that TSI and the ERI turning and ideally all of them. So that's what I would say, you know, in terms of is $10 going to hold, it wouldn't be a bad place to stop, start dollar, start, sorry, start dollar cost averaging and keeping a tight stop loss on it. But I think there's a lot of uncertainty about what happens with, you know, how much FTX exposure, et cetera. I don't think it goes to zero because there's much bigger investors involved than Alameda. You know, we have, <clears throat> pardon me, Andreessen Horowitz invests a lot and some top top tier VCs. So if you wanted to play a bounce, then uh, I would certainly, even as a paper trade, at ten dollars is where I'd put my limit by, maybe just a hair above it. And uh, then these trading tools, uh, this trading view tool here, for some reason it's got a bug in it. It puts the sell all the way down here. But if you are going to play your dollar cost average into Solana then keep a tight stop loss if it breaks 10 the next support zone and liquidity zone is going to be all the way down here in this three dollar range you know so i would say let me get my pointer back and show you here there's stop loss on that if you wanted to play it's a risk favorable trade potentially uh, in terms of at ten dollars because of the support with a as far as a bounce level you know probably put a fibonacci golden pocket on that see where a likely target would be and uh, that would be right up here in the 29 dollar range so if you were to buy it at 10 and had a tight stop loss there you potentially have a 20 to 1 risk reward ratio and again guys it's not something we normally touch on in these these classes here but we do in the uh, active trader class so tight stop loss uh, I would actually, here's the thing, I would not be that aggressive, <clears throat> pardon me, and on this, I would put a target on at least half the position around $16. Now, why is that? There's something that I've known about for a long time, and we used to touch on in day trading. These large candles, some people call them vector candles, generally have their midpoints retested. And that's something you don't need to be a tech wizard or TI wizard to realize. And, and we've seen that time and time again. So uh, if you're able to put in a limit buy at $10 and catch a bounce, there's a number of profit zones in here. One of them would be right in this you know, area there, at that resistance in here. So, you know, and then the final one, we do recommend generally taking profits at three levels. So take profit one would be potentially right here. So, uh, I have to I have to give these disclaimers, people. Uh, everyone, it's uh, you know educational purposes, not financial advice. As a group, though, I can. And so this would be TP1 there, and that was what I would suggest. Now, um, are you are you in Solana now, and you're holding? Is that why you're asking? Uh, I I was uh, waiting to buy. Yeah, I would wait a little bit longer. Uh, because, uh, like uh, you said, uh, and uh, I, I didn't even know how much uh, FTX uh, is going to uh, wait on uh, have um, about Solana. Like you said before, there are a lot of investors in Solana, but uh, is also FTX uh, involved? Yeah. So I was waiting to to find uh, the best uh, time to buy and to make profit out of Solana as the project I think uh, is very good. Yeah, I, I think Solana survives. Uh, Serum, not so much, and I'm still holding some Serum. That's one that we were in, in last year. That's the derivatives based, uh, based on Solana. Uh, that one may be done, I don't know, but Solana is well backed by VCs. 
that um, are unlikely to write it off. It's had some trouble, but I think long term Solana does have a lot of potential. And uh, so this is my read on it. This uh, I would wait till ten dollars, ideally using the indicators because I can draw lines in the sand all day long, but it doesn't mean they're going to hold. I like to buy into strength, and so again, I'd want to see at the very least that our trend strength indicator going from red to green and breaking above the twenty line, like most oscillators. But this one has uh, some special. It's got a lot of like, math and coding behind this that. Joe could speak to, although he doesn't really talk about exactly how he does it. What we've found, and the long and short of it is, these are my criteria, and I wait for this a big green arrow, that's the early reversal indicator, followed by a TSI going red to green. On this chart, I've got the RSI and Stochastics RSI, but those are sort of not really what I'm looking for for making trading decisions, you know, and... Um, uh, but you you are talking about uh, what time frame daily or uh, this or, is uh, daily y yes but normally when you wait for the um, eddy uh, reversal sure um, it's a good question so within the ideal scenario is when the daily and weekly align and they don't always so the good news everybody is we're seeing a lot of that alignment of dailies and weeklies bottoming and we see the most explosive moves out of those zones now this is a pretty bad bear market um, i don't recommend necessarily buying and holding forever it would be it's a trader's market and that's really what we're focusing on not day trading but swing trading and so to explain that further i'd want to see both the daily here and uh, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Julio. Okay, uh, Julio, it's a little bit, yes, I see. Uh, it, when this turns from red to green on the daily and the weekly, last year when we discovered this indicator and it was uh, a discovery that we made not realizing what we had and we were first using it around the uh, daily charts, but we started seeing anomalies and it was Joe that pointed out the weekly is the barometer for when the bigger money is coming in. So you'll catch the bigger moves on the weekly. So back here in August of 2021, if you'll remember back then when the after the summer, yes, uh, right here is where that printed. And we had that nice rally up to the top. So I love the weeklies when it's in confluence also. And so this green arrow was did not have confluence. So we ignored that. We're working on combining these so it will get rid of the noise in the middle. But um, back in here, green and green went higher. So really what I want to see is the green on the weekly and the daily. And that'll tell me we've put in a bottom. Doesn't mean we can't bounce on a couple in the daily period, but the weekly on Solana, we're not there yet. This could start to bottom out, but it certainly could come down a little lower. Again, I think that $10 range, but until it starts to at least turn red to green, I wouldn't go near it personally. Uh, and so and the other thing that we have seen also to kind of play out here is, again, I'd really, I'd want to see the break above 20. So just for everybody here, we don't recommend going all in and going all out. That's something that beginner traders do. The more experienced trader is dollar cost averaging and building position. So starting when this turns red to green, maybe allocate a little bit, allocate some more when it breaks above this trend line and the 20 line here on the weekly. But um, we're not there yet. And uh, so it's a good, uh, good one to read and have a look at together. In terms of the other indicators, see if I have them on this chart didn't plan on opening all this up here but and then that trend indicator that midline is still red so what we watch for here is the the bell signal green the midline goes red to green and then a key in a bell so if I come back over here this is in also in August of 2021 we had the key in the bell pulled back a bit but then it shot up here to november of 2021 so on this weekly basis and the bet little bag of money here it's 
kind of like Mario Brothers is going to come out grabbing all the coins, is what I joke with Joe about. But this is a simple yet powerful indicator by itself. The key trend reversal potentially happening. This is the weekly. The bell is your buy signal. As long as that midline is green, it can come in a little bit. You see, this is why these are so unique. And then sure enough, it bounced and ran all the way back up here from this lower level all up here. And right at this one is the take profit signal. And sure enough, it turned around by then. So anyway, hopefully that helps. And uh, does that answer your question? And does, uh, do we have any? Um... Yes. The, the other thing is that I put also the, um, um, if you put on the, the indicator of the, the derivative second, you will see that in the daily time of Solana, there is uh, is almost uh, touching that line. Uh, touching which line? Uh, the, the second um, derivative, B, the, the BB. Point to uh, indicator is uh, called. Uh, I think uh, I, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not, not following. But well, um, yeah, I think that's you know. Um, do we have other questions? I want to make sure we have time to bring Joe on. And let's see. No, no, no thank you. But thanks for your question. Uh, KS, one of our students, posted. There's likely more bearish moves in Solana. And let's see, K KS, if I can grab that link. I put the link in the Crypto Mastery Facebook group. And so if you guys are members of the Crypto Mastery group and you have access to that Facebook group, that article is already posted there. Okay, I'll bring it up just so we can compare it. The block, uh, let's see lots of ads on here. So quickly, Solana, T Projects, D Gods, headed to Ethereum, Polygon. Is that the link here? I I'm not going to skim through all the news there, but um, anyway, um, there's lots of news out there on both sides of these things. So, um, and then Joe, if you're on, I'd love to hear from you. Let's see uh, one comment. Hello? Are you there with us? <clears throat> yes. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brett. Susie? So I'd like to introduce yeah. everyone to Joe, who's uh, usually so Joe and Susie teach this class, and he's the creator of the indicators. And um, let's see, quick comment from David. Uh, let's see, just set up trading view, trying to set up screens. Uh, David, these are, uh, if you're in our M3 program, these are proprietary indicators. Yeah, so they would appear in your invite only area here. So down below, we've got a bunch of these. Many of, I have more of them because we're always testing new ones. But uh, the ones we're showing today, if you'd like more to find out more about those, you can go to moonstream.io slash uh, m3 and learn more about those uh, and so and these classes are included so essentially um let's see actually uh team if you're on that thing's still redirecting that thing should not be uh, redirecting to the closed page and um okay so uh myrene if you're on could you uh handle that please because I had that working before the class. Maybe it's a cache version of my screen here, so I'll try that. But uh, anyway, Joe, uh, why don't you come on and say a few words? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, well, basically, I, I just wanted to go over one of the markets here. I, I didn't know if we can pull up uh, one of these coins that I thought was a good example to kind of show everyone what exactly we're looking for. Um, if we can go back to Susie's screen, is that okay? Sure. Susie, sure. do you want to take that back over? Yeah, we'll do. Okay, one sec. All right, there we're on. I just wanted to go into this layout. And if you can pull up the uh, Plume, P-L-U-U-S-D, on the Coinbase. And this is a market that's trending. But I thought this would be a, a great example where to start at because you know, when you're new and you're starting off the, starting off trading, you, you really need to know what you what to look for and then also to see the value in the tools. And this right here is a really good example. Uh here. And if you can uh tighten the chart up, please. 
and make that a, a daily chart? Oh, sure. Perfect. So I just call your attention here to the 22nd, and that's when we got the ERI. And um, the ERI, what's significant about that is, is that that's the early warning um, to um, get prepared. And it's also uh, a great time where you can also scale into your position. Because the ideal here is, the concept is that we're scaling in uh, to the, with, into the market with the different chart overlays. Um, you could apply 25, 25, 25. And these are the, the five best uh, chart overlays that I have found through my career that show the market cycles with really uh, clarity and really easy to use. So this right here, uh, when we see in here this early reversal, which is the green vertical line, uh, so if you can put an arrow right there. Yep, sure. Right. And if you can take a look here and show in here what percentage of the market actually went up since that reversal. So to use trading, you guys, this measuring tape here, you click on that and then click where you want to start the calculation or the analysis and then where you want to stop. So I'm stopping at the top of that candlestick because it got that far. And if you had bought down there and then set your system to sell at this level, it would be sold by now. And you would have made 15.54% in seven days. Now, this was a great move up, but this wasn't just the only clue that we had. If you take a look um, back to the other format, Right. Let's talk about a couple other things. First, starting off here, if you want to uh, take a look at the TSI. So, Susie, if you can put an arrow and show in here the first green dot on the TSI. And this is an oscillator that we use that confirms trend direction. Uh, you can set your alert with this oscillator for the green dot uh, for the entry. And you can also set your alert for the red dot for the exit. Right now, if you're in this market and you've been following along uh, over the last uh, few weeks and you're long, you'd be looking in here for the TSI to show in here the uh, red dot, which will trigger your alarm. And that would be a great time in there where you could scale your position out with profits. Right now, the market is trending strong. And we can see the radar is showing all green. Now, let's talk about another chart overlay, which is the signal line. So if you take a look, Susie, if you can put an arrow right at the cross on the signal line. Okay, and if you could tighten the chart up a little bit. So right there when we got the signal line, this is an additional clue, whereas you can scale in another 25% onto your position. So on this setup here, the TSI uh, first green dot is a setup, scaled in, the uh, signal line cross, another scale uh, setup, scale in. Um, now we have the uh, trend indicator. Now the trend indicator is the last chart overlay to give you the confirmation. So, you know, you can trade just with this chart overlay if you know if the other chart overlays become a little overwhelming um this is one of the ones that's kind of like the last uh call before the train leaves the uh the post so when you see the bell alert the bell alert is the final signal that the trend has begun so that's an alert that goes off and after the bell we look to see the number sequence. And we look for that number sequence to go higher. And that kind of confirms that the market is uh, trending higher, making higher highs. So generally, once we get the bell alert, anything is possible, and we can generally get the follow through from the trade. So, you know, what's significant about this is 
is is that you know positioning ourselves at the beginning of that with the ERI you know once you acquire the education from utilizing the chart overlays these are additional confirmations along the way to let you know you're doing the right thing you know it, it's one thing once you position yourself and you get in the market but what happens tomorrow what happens the next day what happens if the market doesn't keep trending and it goes flat and that's where the value is inside these chart overlays because if the market stops trending we see it with the clues and we're able to react and being able to react is how we're able to manage our risk and you have to manage risk the same way you manage profits so um, can i mention two other things sure. about the indicators that i see yes so guys we talked earlier about the average true range now back here the average true range was in the entry zone and remember i had said that it had to go past that red line to trigger it this is a perfect example so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on my little sidebar here i like to do this horizontal line because it goes through all it goes both directions so this is where that red average true range in the it was in the downward trajectory and it passed that number so i think 902 is that number and then that's when the average true range switched so i'm going to take away this line now since you see that and i'm just show you that this one is in an average true range of upward still so it it would have to hit uh, Joe, is it correct to say if it hits this red line again, the average true range will be going to the downward directory, dire, direct, yeah, direction, just simplify my words. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's, that's correct. I mean, right now it, it's trending above it and that radar is green. So right. you, you just have to uh, let the cake bake and, and just let the market do what it needs to do right now. You, you know, you don't want to really step in front of this train. If you look at the old highs, um, coming in the beginning in November, uh, so if you were to put a horizontal line right there, that comes in right there above 10. So if we can get a close above 10, it it looks like this thing might, um, you know, uh, maybe a, a complete change in trend right here. Like right there, you mean like wow, that was that was that was a pretty high candlestick. Well, you, you want to bring it down a little bit to the high on the 19th. Right here, this is the 19th. Uh, no, keep going down. That one? Yes, right there. And if you make the chart tighter. Perfect. That's what I was trying to get to. That'd be an exciting one. So, yeah. So the thing is, is that, um, you know, from where we are right now with this radar uh, green, and if you slip the uh, chart over to the left, like this one? Yeah, I just wanted to show on there how many uh, numbers the uh, trend indicator can go up. The, the trend indicator goes from one to seven, and it does the recount. Oh. And if you were to look on the uh, trend indicator, right what number do you have now? Yeah. Oh, we're five only on a, a five. So it goes to seven, so we're on a, a five right here. Yeah. So if it continues so, its cycle, it would have two more movements. Yeah, and being that this is a daily chart, you know, each day you get a number. So today's Tuesday, and this thing can go to seven, uh, you know, which is like the, the next couple of days. So if you're long in this market, really you just want to um, let the market do what it needs to do and allow the numbers to, just to confirm the journey. But let's talk about a little bit of something too, because this isn't financial advice. And I want you guys to understand the ceilings. So I do want to just tell them if you get in now, you're already at the top of that Keltner band of those like moving averages. So there, this is in case Joe, someone's like, oh, I'm going to buy right now. I mean, if, if you're going to trade on a one day chart, you're kind of at a little risk. It is not an acquisition mode date. Like acquisition moment was back here. So how do you want to just, 
I know we can't tell you guys what to do, but you know, Joe, let's just say, Joe, would you be buying this today? Because I don't want them to think, yeah, I'm going to get in this right now. Right now. Oh, oh, well, I mean, look, when you have the chart overlays, you know, uh, there's always going to be an opportunity for you. Okay. Now, this opportunity started with the ERI, and if you look at the date on the ERI, what's the date on that when it first showed? I'm going to pull this back. That was Tuesday, the twentieth. Okay, and you figure that's about seven days ago. So the thing is, is, is that you want to be reactive to when the signals uh, take place so that you can get the maximum benefit from the signal that the technology provides. Now, in this case point, right, when we look at that date, you see the TSI? It was just turning from red to green. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. And if you were to make, if you change the color of that arrow to blue, I, I just don't want anybody to get that color confused. And that right there was the beginning of the trend. So look, if you miss, miss the beginning of the trend, I'm not going to um, be an advocate of being a market chaser just to be in the market. You know, um, we have the tools, and when you have the tools and you have the education, you know, there's always going to be another potential opportunity for you. So the best we can do from this case point is, is that we can applaud the winners, the ones that took reaction to this on the 20th, on, on the success that they had. And right now, what they'll be looking to do is exit with a profit. And then we can take the education that we have and take a look at another market. Um, which I just found something over here, Susie, for you to pull up. Okay. All right. And um, we can look at maybe what other potential um, gains could be done somewhere else where we could find uh, a new ERI at the beginning or a new potential TSI at the beginning and, um, and look to try to put as many odds in our favor to be successful because that's what this game is about is putting the odds in your favor versus your competitors that don't have the tools and therefore um, it's a very difficult game for them. So, uh, Susie, if you can pull up AAVE USD. Hi. And I thought this would be a, uh, an interesting coin here. All right. And if you can make that uh, just a little bit tighter, please. And I just wanted to point out is, is that we had an ERI, which actually came in on the 12th, and the market didn't follow through. And, and sometimes that'll happen, okay? You'll get an ERI, and it, and it may not go right away, right? But let's talk about what, it, what and how things look right now. Starting in there with the volatility index. The volatility index is down there below the 20. And now that's a sweet spot when it's down there in the red, all right? That lets you know that it's at one end of the extreme part of the cycle and that uh, you have uh, odds, mathematical odds in your favor that things could possibly turn. Next, the TSI. The TSI just started to give its second green dot and it's, it's fighting to come out of the green and, and that's the oversold zone. So that has a lot of uh, potential right there. Next, if you notice the signal line, it looks like today, ironically, Susie. Yeah. <laughs> today, the signal line is, is going across. So that's great odds to have in your favor to know that you're getting into the market and it has, you have that momentum behind you um, that the market should change direction. Now, What's interesting here is, is that when we get to the trend indicator, we do not have the bell alert, okay? We just got the key. So in, in this case point, we would set our, our alert for the bell indicator. So um, for anybody new following along, um, Susie, if you could show them how to set the uh, bell alert so that um, if this market triggers, um, everybody can be notified. And then also, there's a paper trader inside the trading view. And if you're new, I can encourage you 
um, to trade the paper trader with the signals and acclimate yourself to the platform on how it works. So I'm starting my bell alert. So what I did is I clicked on this indicator zone, okay? So I'm double tapping. I'm, I'm on a Mac computer, okay? So I'm on a, a Mac laptop. So I double tap, that's how I get to that. I add alert, and then I'm gonna say, right here, you could do a drop down. I wanna know when the bell is gonna hit. So I'm gonna name this because this will come to me through an email um, and it'll pop up on my computer and I need to know exactly what I that I wanna do. So I'm just gonna say, um, a, a, I'm, just, I'm gonna actually put it, I like pictures. Bell alert. This is a one day chart, one day AAVE USD buy. This is for me. And then I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna label it, and then I'm gonna put that in the message box. So when that comes to me, I'm gonna know exactly what I want to make myself do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paper trade this. I'm gonna say, so to trade, I'm gonna go to the top indicator zone and I'm gonna tap this and I'm gonna say trade. And I'm going to say buy, market, I'll buy 10,000 units. And then, Joe, I like to put in a take profit. So if I'm going through life that I, I go ahead and I'm taking profit. Oh, look, the alert just came. So that's good. Okay, so the alert chirped. Um, um, so then I'm going to put to sell on this top Keltner band. I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to say 6016. So I'm buying at 57 at the market price. I'm going to say take profit. And this is paper trading. So what will happen is it's going to show you I'm buying here and then I'm going to sell when it gets to that point. So that's a pretty excessive amount that I bought, but it's paper trading. And then you can click on the bottom of your screen on Coinbase and you can look at your paper trading. It'll tell you you're at profit and to close it, you would just do X out. So right now we're negative. So I've got to take some more time to make it. This is, we're looking at a one day chart. So if I wanted to show a profit immediately, then I would be working on a three minute chart for like intraday trading. But this is what I say it needs to season and give it some time. Joe, is there anything else you want to add to that? Uh, no, um, but the uh... I'm noticing the time and we're a little bit over one. There's one more chart. Like let that cake bake, right? You have a limited order out there. You've done that correctly. And um at this point we say LVC, let the cake bake. And let's take a look at one more market here, which is QNT with quant. Quant. And USD and Coinbase? Yes. One day yes. chart. Okay. Yes beautiful right and i just wanted to point this out because uh the volatility index is down here at the 20. uh the tsi is at the oversold it looks like it's just coming out and again the signal line just crossed today so i try to show things uh in um in motion or the setups as they're happening um, this is another one, Susie, where you can set your alert for the bell alert. And in particular, when you're done, I just wanted to talk about the ATR. So I'm just putting a note to myself, guys, so I know exactly what to do. This will come through by email, and then that way that message will be in the email. Okay, so what else did you want me to do, Joe? Well, you didn't, you, so why are they alerting already when the bell's on? <laughs> Joe, am I doing that right? Because it's like, it's like alerting right away. 
Okay, well, let's take a look in there. Let's uh, right click on the chart overlay. Okay, all right. Add alert. Okay, and you just leave the bell there. And um, and do you have it set for only once? Okay, that's fine. Okay, click create. Um, let me just do general. All right. Yeah. So I mean, each day, each day, there's a number or um, that will print, and uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe today it's going to print the bell. We won't know until four o'clock, until we get the final print on the daily. So, if if there's a, a case point such as today where you go to set the alert, and the alert triggers, it may be because it's right in the process of printing that bell, and the daily charts uh, print their final bar at five p.m. Eastern. So um, check back on this, and we'll get that final print of today's bar, Susie. Okay. Now, if you notice in there the uh, ATR level, where that's coming in at, yeah. so if you made the, the chart a little bit tighter. Yeah, it's probably going to switch to entry if it keeps passing. Perfect. I, I just wanted to point out the last time when it broke the ATR to the downside, which was the beginning of November. So there's a good chance in here that this market may test in here and reset the ATR. Um, so if you would put a, a vertical line right there with an arrow showing when it broke the, uh, on the beginning of November, the ATR to the downside. I'm sorry. Did you need me to do something? Like I was so basically. Are you saying like this right here when they go past this number? Well, if you take that vertical line right and you move it to the left. Okay. And you put it on the beginning of November. Right that there. One? Yes. And we're just uh, showing in here when the cycle moved down on the ATR. So if you look at that date, that's November, and we're all the way here to the present, which is the end of December, that's almost been um, almost like a month and a half uh, cycle down, which is about four to six weeks. So that's another clue that this market could be potentially bottoming out, uh, and if it does, well, then it could be of a move of significance if it breaks the ATR. So this right here is something here to definitely um, watch over the next couple of weeks and the next couple of days if it does uh, follow through. Yeah, that's a great find, great find. And I love the fact that we have one, two, three indicators. The volatility index is just coming out of oversold. You see that little boom. And this is great because I wanted to show them this the significance of the candlestick color because there's so many moving factors in these brilliantly made mathematical quantitative you know i love these indicators i can't say enough about them because they go with time i don't have to draw on a chart because that's not me i'm, I'm not that um type of person i i like absolutely certainty that there's some other math beyond my brain going into effect <laughs> Um, sometimes I get super excited and energetic and maybe I'll twist some numbers. So this is just knowing that the computer is doing it for me. So here's one thing I want to show you guys the, that the coolness of these indicators that you see this color. This is when you're in the, what we call like the cake bake zone, you know, it's not oversold. It's not, um, overbought up here and not oversold. So you could see right there, it just 
literally just came out of that little zone. So it's most likely, let me see, it's something, it's, yep, see, it's 23.67 is that volatility index, and it's reflecting right here. So personally, I buy red, I sell green. I mean, it's so simple. It's like I could probably train a kindergartner to do this, and they'll think it's a video game, but they could be making me money. Um, but I buy red, I sell green. Um, so let's just flip this, and here's the thing. If you bought red, then you probably wouldn't have bought anything around here, right? Because it doesn't always go into this low zone. That's why I get super excited with that indicator because I see red, and sometimes, I know this is risky, guys, sometimes I just acquire when it's in the red zone. Whether the other indicators are indicating or not, Joe earmuffs when you hear that, but then when it gets into the green zone, you take profit because like it, it doesn't go red very often, right? Um, there's some red zone, here's some red zone. So it depends on what type of personality you are, you know, what you, how you love to learn. I definitely love pictures and colors. I am a combination of mathematical and, uh, and artistic too. So um, I think these are developed fondly for people that um, really like to deep dive, analyze things. So I think we're done for the day. I've checked the question box to see if anybody else had any more questions. And I think I think we're good. Is there anything Actually, else you guys um, want to say? Yeah, hey guys, I want to just come back on at the end. So this is Brett. Great class, everyone. Uh, they had, we had a little confusion on the uh, link, so uh, it's redirecting to somewhere it shouldn't, and that's the magic of the internet. But uh, if you, we have, um, let's see, uh, fix that to show the correct page. So if you can, if you'd like more information about these, go to moonstream.io slash m3c. The, the M3 was going to an expired page and going the wrong direction. So we've been kind of working on that. But uh, at any rate, and uh, what I'll do here is just change over to um, show my screen there and let me know if you guys can see the right screen, which should be this one now. And that would be the page if you go to moonstream.io slash M3C. You should see a countdown timer. We've just reopened this. And um, so if you could confirm, Susie, you guys are seeing the blue screen there with, um, I should say, final days up top. But uh, this is, so we reopened this and we're going to announce it this afternoon. We had closed this down Sunday. Uh, this has all the information on it about the classes, the weekly classes on Tuesdays with Joe and Susie, who were great, right? So, and more centered around the indicators. And then the Wednesday class, which is tomorrow, where we deep dive a little bit more into uh, the markets and the overall markets and uh, actual coins and things. So uh, you can read all about this here and the uh, buttons are live. So you can actually get started for as low as $399. We've opened up payment plans because we had so many people saying, God, I'd really love to get in this, but um, I can't, can't really swing it right now. So we're gonna do that for a few more days. And the other thing I was going to show you is that some of the uh, bonuses that we had added. Sorry, guys, we've got windows overlapping each other. And the uh, these are some of the bonuses that we've added. So the candlestick patterns, so these are included in uh, the uh, program. So you guys, if you're not sure which yeah, what a bullish engulfing candle is, we've got this cheat sheet right here or bearish engulfing. And then we have others here that show there's the dark version and high probability trade setups here that you guys will get access to. So we want to make sure that everybody has access to the, the cheat sheets. You know, in business, copywriters usually borrow successful headlines and then they'll modify them. That's one variation of it. But these are things we look at a lot and they generally do play out. So while the indicators are great, it's good to have kind of a roadmap. And uh, certainly as uh, the, the indicators are the basis of everything we do. So um, with that, so I want to thank everyone. We did run a bit long here today, but again, all you have to do is go over to moonstream.io slash M3C. That stands for M3 Crypto. And again, we're keeping this open for a few more days, but we, we're closing it so we can hit the ground running in January. And we have a lot. Uh, plan for that and a lot of things we're waiting and watching for what we're expecting you know again i think we're
probably going lower here, but we're waiting in either case, we're waiting for our signals to fire. And you can learn all about this sort of kitchen sink program. We wanted to put together everything we possibly could to give you guys the tools for success. And uh, that's what um, uh, this will let you do. So that includes indicators, the classes, and there's all kinds of reviews here. And if you'd like to have a little fun, there's even, if it's not here yet, there will be by the end of the day, the link to the uh, video reviews. We had a little video contest, which is just closed. And um, let's see if I can show you that here. I know it's a big right screen for a second, but uh, this is the link here where we have our winners. So we've announced our winners on the video contest. I'll be doing a video on that soon, but there's some really fun videos here from our users. Uh, that will link to this page at moonstream.io slash M3 crypto. And there's a couple bonus videos. There's even one we're calling the, uh, I guess, the the chicken blooper. Uh, this uh, lady had sent in a picture, a video of her daughter holding two chickens, kind of berating me for uh, the fact that uh, her mom is now making her invest part of her allowance in crypto. And this is Julie, her mother here. So anyway, um, highly recommend you go look at those. We are just here to give you all the information and um, to give you the tools to succeed in the next year. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for hopping on this free class and um, we wish you the best and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hopefully see more of you in the M3 uh, crypto trader and that would be that URL that I just gave you there. So we'll be reaching out by email and letting you guys know that we reopened that for a few days more and added some payment options for you guys. All right. I think you forgot so, the biggest thing, Brett. Tomorrow is Brett's private class. And so if you are a member of that, you get to be on a private training with just a select few people that are part of it. And you get Brett's class, which comes on very Wednesday at noon, right? Yep, yeah, uh, that's right. So I think I mentioned that, but um, so thanks for that. And let me see if there's any more uh, comments here. I think we covered it all, guys. So Sam, what's the difference between a TSI and TSI entry? So is that something you can go over tomorrow in class? Um, yes. Yeah, they're essentially the same. One is a little bit different variation that because we're always improving those. Joe's always tinkering in his lab. Uh, he's like a mad scientists, I mean that in the best possible way, that is always working on different indicators and uh, we're doing some cool things in other markets. So in the M3 Trader, typically you guys will get beta access or first access to these classes, uh, these new classes like the um, exciting one on vertical returns on the semiconductors, but that's a little bit of a departure for uh, of crypto. But you know, crypto has been a little volatile lately and um, so you know, it's a good way to stay in front of the uh, new things that we're playing around with. So anyway, why don't we wrap up, Susie? Uh, thanks, uh, looks like the link is in the chat and we will talk to you guys again next week. So Tuesdays, Susie and Joe's class, Wednesdays, my class, both at noon Eastern. And um, of course you get direct access to me in the private signal chat with M3 Crypto. I'm in there every day, alerting you guys to uh, what's happening and what to pay attention to. So anyway, uh, thanks to everyone. and. Um, yeah, why don't we go ahead and wrap up here? Thanks for everything, Brett, and have a great class tomorrow. Thanks, Joe, for coming on with me. Thank you, everyone, for uh, enjoying the time and spending the time with us today.